I'm so excited to be here with you again today for a Fun Fold Friday. Yes, I have a really cool Fun Fold for you today. And what I want to say is that giving gift cards does not have to be boring. In today's Fast Fold video, Fast, <laughs> Fun Fold video, um, I am going to show you how to make a simple gift card holder that will brighten anyone's day. Switch over to my comments. I almost forgot to do that. Wait, wait for that to pop up. There we go. Good morning, Kim. How are you? Awesome. So we're making a gift card holder today. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Christina Reese, and this is Creating with Christina. I come live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to bring you a card tutorial. And good morning, Dorothy and Nancy. How are you? bring you a card tutorial and if you want the written instructions to these card tutorials just put written instructions in the comment and I'll get that out to you okay so this is the stamp set there we go and these are all the pieces I'm just gonna slow down and go back okay so we have a white card base we've got uh, misty moonlight we've got designer paper we have, that's all I've shown you so far. Oh, and the punch, the punch that goes with it. Okay. All right. So, my gosh. Oh, okay. Everybody's saying, flip camera, flip camera, flip camera. <laughs> it's flipped. <laughs> all right. And like I said, I'm using the Stamparatus. Um, and because this is a photopolymer stamp and you have a foam rubber, and I don't like pushing the card up in the corner because sometimes it doesn't stamp on the edge there. I move it out here to the center of the grid paper. I mark it um, because I'm making many of these. And then I just use a low-tack washi tape to hold it in place. Okay, so we're there. Now let's uh, ink up our flowers here. And we're using Mementos water-based black ink because I'm going to be coloring with the alcohol stamp and blends. And get that on there. Okay. And that looks good. Take my chamois and you just have to do that with it and it cleans off that stamp nice and it just stays right there. All right, we're going to move this out of the way. Okay. And whoops, you have to be careful with the tape that you don't tear your paper. <clears throat> okay, put that to the side. And I need the paper for my jar my jar my jar oh goodness where did i do with that paper here it is all right and whoops same thing oh, i don't want to get black ink on my sweater <laughs> okay uh, same thing here we're just gonna put this paper up against that and now what's so cool about our stamp positioning tool is you can use both sides Okay, and then that is just going to stamp my jar right there. And so I'm going to ink up my jar. I also love this stamping tool because I have a trimmer in my hand. I have hyperthyroidism, and one of the symptoms is uh, trimmers, hand trimmers. And my stamping is always perfect whenever I use this. Um, so that's another great reason to have a stamp positioning tool. Now that I have my jar... I need my stems and I need my water. So let me uh, clean this jar off real quick. And take this plate off and switch it out with this plate. And here are my stems. Make sure that goes right there. Ooh, that's right on the edge. Hmm. I'm going to reposition that. It looks like it might have moved over. Okay. There we go. again. We have our... Oh, thank you, Nancy. You're right. It is only 9 a.m. down here. <laughs> okay, everybody's tucked in the corner, and now we have some stems. And now this is really cool. This stamp set, we call it a reversible stamp set. Um, because you can turn the stamp upside down to have a solid. And let me show you what I mean by that. 
Okay, I'm going to just turn this around so I have my water. Make sure that fits in there. Oh, you know what? I do think maybe I missed just a little bit. So this side of this stamp, let me pull it up, has the little hash marks in it and the outline. But when you flip it over, it's a solid flat surface. And so that's what you can see my hand trimmering. <laughs> that is what um, we're going to stamp with. So I'm going to put that down like it's going to stamp. Right there, I'm going to fill my jar with water. I'm going to come here and I'm going to pick it up. And there we go. All right. Now I have, uh, I'm using a real pretty blue called Balmy Blue. Also, but it is a little dark. Um, I didn't want my water that dark. So I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper. There's a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to stamp off one time. So there we go. Yeah, see how dark that is? That's kind of too dark. But the second time around gives me the perfect color for water. Let me pull that up so you can see it better. Oh gosh, I am shaking this morning. Okay, there we go. Da -da -da -da. All done with the stamping. Now for coloring and punching. So I'm just going to move my Stamparatus out of the way. Okay. Um, we are going to use our new in colors. So we're going to color our stems with just jade. I love this color. And, you know, I'm just going down the stems. Oops. And wherever a stem might overlap and cause a shadow, I'll touch that with the darker just jade. But for this part, I'm just quickly going through and coloring all the stems. There we go. Okay. And, and like I said, wherever, like this stem way back in the back, let's color that one darker, half dark, a little darker there. Um, this one is back behind. I'll make it a little darker there, there. Okay. And then I like to go back over where the dark and the light meet and just kind of blend it. There we go. Okay. So we have our stems done. Now this is the fun part. Pull that off gently and get our punch out. Oh, you know what else? Um, hmm. <laughs> when I stick it in like that, the jar's upside down and it won't go this way. So not a problem. I will trim it and use some post. This is my trick for when I do this accidentally and I need to turn it upside down. So let me get a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to trim that like that. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm because I need, I can't, let me show you what's going to happen here. It's, yeah, I, there's no way to hold on to it because it's smaller. And so I need it to be bigger. And the way I do that is I can just, well, let's put it on this side. Stick this here. And so now I can put it in there and hold it. Cool, huh? So that's a little, what they call a hack. If you, um, ooh, I am really shaking this morning. There we go. Whee! <laughs> I love punches. Don't you love punches? <laughs> oh. Colleen says, I'm getting the stamp positioning tool. Oh, yes. It, it saves the day, Colleen. Oh, it does. Especially, you know, Christmas cards are coming up, you guys. Um, so you, if you're planning on making Christmas cards and you don't have a stamp positioning tool, that is a game changer. It's like you can, you can whip out 20 Christmas cards in no time because you just do the assembly line stamping. It's pretty cool. All right, we've got our little jar. Oh, you know what? I forgot to get my thread. Hold on. Let me grab that real quick. And where did I put my thread? Come here, Mr. Thread. Hmm. Well, I know I have some. Ah, there it is. Okay my linen thread. I am going to have fun wrapping linen thread around my cute little jar. So let me get some tape. Hmm, I know I put my adhesive somewhere. <laughs> Did I leave it up here on my turn stop? No. Hmm. Is it behind me? No. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Hmm. 
Hmm, where is my tape runner? Well, that's not good. Ladies and gentlemen, I have officially lost my tape runner. Well, hold on, I'll go get another one. <laughs> you know, I was just making the card this morning. You'd think I wouldn't lose things so quickly. All right. Just grab me another one. Oh, and by the way, Stampin' Up! has uh, come out with a new tape runner. I don't own any of them yet because I have so many of these old ones left. Um, and I want to use all these up but before I get the new one. But it, people are saying it is so awesome. It is super sticky. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right, I'm going to put this mat down so that it, just in case I go over, you know, the edge. I'm just putting the tape back there so that my linen thread, I'm just going to stick that back there. And then I'm just going to wrap it. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then I can come back here and just have all that stick in the back and trim that off. Oops, come here. I don't want it that close to the edge. And look, my little jar has twine wrapped around it now. And I'm going to put a bow on there too. Okay. That's fun. Love that. And that's another reason why I wanted the thick card stock so it'd be sturdy enough to, to wrap twine around. All right, back to my panel I'm making. Here we go. So, so our jar is going to go right there like on with dimensional. So how cool is that? Don't you love that? We have to color our sunflowers. I've got bumble. Uh, we do not own a bumblebee uh, stampin' blend. They didn't make one. So I'm using uh, Mango Melody and that's... Uh, that's a good color for Bumblebee. And I, this is going to take a while, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, if you're watching on the replay, you can fast forward through me coloring. <laughs> if you're watching live, I hope you're doing something to entertain yourself. Ugh, I probably should have had this colored already. But actually, I do have one colored. I wonder if I should just... Yeah, because this is going to take forever on live TV. Voila! <laughs> uh, so what I just colored it in with the light mango melody, and then I went in with some dark mango, and then I blended. This is Calypso Coral, this little flower down here. And then this, I don't know what it is. It's like a fuzzy, I don't know, fuzzy something. And so I'm using the crumb cake on that. All right, and where the little dots are, I'm putting some dark crumb cake. Oh, and I also, between the flowers, I put light crumb cake because it looked so weird having that white bright coming up through the flowers because it it wouldn't be that way in real life. You'd see stuff behind it, so it's more like a, um, kind of like a shadow back there. It's pretty cool. All right, just jade for the leaves. I'm going to color these little ones light, and the, these up here dark. Okay, there's not, you can't, oh, you pretty much can only just dot these things. You can't really color them. And this looks like a fern. Cool, okay. So that's all done. And then like I said, I'm going to make this dark up here. Yay. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> So, a uh, word of advice, those of you who want to start making YouTube videos for card tutorials like I do, have a very, uh, a, if you're coloring a large image, have it partially colored already. <laughs> what do y'all think? Oh, you think it's fun to watch me? Oh, watch me because of comments. Yeah, okay, I agree, I agree. Okay, that, that's, that's very good, Evelyn. Me and all my talking. <laughs> you know, you guys, I love making these videos. I, it is, you know, some people go, oh my God, how do you do it all the time? I'm like, because it's so much fun. I love sharing. That's like my passion. It's why I was, uh, became a school teacher. I was a middle school math teacher. Um, it's, and I love mathematics. I'm kind of weird that way. Math and science. Um, yeah, and I loved it so much. I wanted to to help kids love it. So yeah, I had a lot of fun as a middle school math teacher. And now I'm a YouTuber. 
I'm an official YouTuber. I have over 2,000 of you guys watching me on YouTube. I think that's so awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to make the center and then maybe on the edges a little darker. Yeah, I'm always just thinking about, okay, where's my light coming from? Where would some shadows be? And um, just touch with the dark. And then, like I said, if it's too harsh, light and dark harshness, you just come back with the light and kind of, in a circular motion, blend, blend the line. And it works really good. All right, we have colored our sunflowers. Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're so pretty. I love them. Okay. And our weed jar goes right here. Yay. That is so cute. And, of course, we need it on dimensionals. <laughs> One and two. And I'm putting four on here because I want it to be real stuck. <laughs> you do candle? Oh my gosh, sixth graders are my favorite. And then eighth graders and then seventh graders. Have you ever taught seventh grade candle? Oh, those boys can be pretty mean. <laughs> Evelyn was a teacher too. Evelyn, what did you teach? There we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, let me pull it up so y'all can see it better. Yay. I love this stamp set. It's so fun. All right, now I need my um, the rest of my card stuff here. We're going to put this on here like this. And you can take the mark. stuck on there. There we go. All right, and just center that the best you can. That's pretty good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Oh, I said I was going to make a bow. Yeah, so. Um, and remember, I just take two little loops. Come here. And just twist them. Tie them. And then I hold the loop while I pull the excess thread through. Whee! Because you don't want your bow to twist. It needs to be really little. Is that good? Oh, that's a perfect size. Okay. And you need a glue dot, definitely, to put this on. <clears throat> um. And the way I do, I am, um, for those of you who, um, yeah, some great girls are mean too. Oh my gosh. But it and and I just found that they tended to be mean to me too. <laughs> Evelyn says, no, students are all great. Oh no, the students are great. Um it's just that behavior towards each other for some reason. I don't know what it is about seventh grade. Well, actually I do. They're going through that's really when most of them go through that change and they're struggling. Sixth graders, I always found, were still just a little bit like elementary kids and still love doing all the fun projects. But eighth graders always cracked me up because they always thought they just knew everything and they didn't need any help <laughs> or anybody telling them anything. And they're just, it's just kind of cute to see how grown up they think they are. <laughs> but yes, middle school's my jam. Love middle school. Now, where did my card base go? Da, 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 da. All right, I have the card base. Now, I. Like I said, I'm running mine through the embossing machine with the brick wall. And let me show you the brick wall embossing folder here. And so the way you do that, so you don't get the whole card, is you just stick the card in right up to the embossing line there, like that. And then you run it through the machine, okay? And so you just get the bricks here. You don't get them all the way over here. That's pretty simple. And I score that. Um, like I said, we're making a gift card holder. So we are going to score this at one and a quarter right here, and we're going to turn it underneath, okay, and make a little pocket back there. So let me get my scoring tool, which is also my cutter, and put this here, and we're going at one and a quarter. And this side of the of our cutting scoring tool has a one and a quarter so I can just come over here and bump it up and make sure you're using the scoring tool and not the cutting side and then just run that back a couple of times okay and y'all can 
see the score there and then just fold it back on itself like that okay isn't that cool that's so cool now let's decorate it a little bit before we assemble first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some designer paper and put it here on this side all right and i like using liquid glue when i'm using an uneven surface so let me get that going there we go And another nice thing about liquid glue is you can wiggle or you have some wiggle room before it dries. Mm -hmm. All right. And then on this side also, because when you fold this back, you want some something interesting here and or something pretty. So and it doesn't need the glue, it's flat on flat, and so I can just use the tape runner, or you can use the glue if you want. I mean it doesn't matter. To make the gift card holder part, okay, so it's going to be like this, and then when you open it up, there's a place to put a gift card here. Put a notch. Get a one-inch punch. We don't sell ours anymore, but um, you can get a one-inch punch anywhere. And you just want to go halfway, okay? You just want a halfway punch, so just like that, and punch a notch. Ooh, going through thick cardstock and designer series paper. <laughs> you have to use some pressure there. Okay, now it looks a little bit more like a, a gift card holder there. Okay, next thing is we need some heavy-duty tape to hold it down here on the two sides. And so I use tear and tape. And it's okay if it goes past the, the fold because when you fold it, it'll just stick right there. That's, so that's cool. And... Some on the side. Now, yesterday I had, or not yesterday, Wednesday I had trouble getting this up off of a ribbon. It's a lot easier on cardstock, but everybody was saying, use your pokey tool, use your piercing tool. So here we go. Yep. And voila, up in just like magic. Ta da! <laughs> and then we just bend that back on itself, just like that. Okay, get that real good. Matter of fact, get your scoring tool out and let's burnish that real good so it stays. Mm -hmm. There, beautiful. Okay, yay, a gift card. Can Oh yeah, sixth graders are still babies. They sure are. <laughs> and our fun cover. Ta-da! Isn't that neat? I love it. So uh, now you want to make sure you don't get any adhesive right here because you don't want it to stick to this side. All right. So um, I'm just going to and I'm going to use glue. It's a little stronger because this is the door flap and it'll get some use. OK. And it's also going on the uneven brick wall surface there. OK. Trying to center it. There we go. That looks good. Okay. Fun Fold Friday. And I'm going to pull that up so you can see the brick wall better because it it that it kind of looks like white on white, but it really Oh, come on there. There oh, there we go. You can see the brick wall good there. Yeah, it's just really cool to have that texture back there. All right. And then um you can just put any little tag right here tied onto the um to the bow, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I forgot to get a sentiment out. I'm, I want to use a sentiment that says "For You." I'm trying to think which stamp set had that in it. Um, oh, um, hmm. For you, I believe it's the blossoms in bloom. Blossoms in bloom. Where are you? There you are. 
Thank you. I like you a lot. Get well soon. Thinking of you. Thank you. Well, it has a thank you. Thank you would be cute right there. Put a little thank you tag. We can put a little thank you tag there. Let's do that. Oops, can't see it. There we go. <laughs> there. Thank you right there, that little tag. So, um, how many of you guys save your strips when you're cutting white cardstock? Look at all the strips I have. <laughs> so I just need a, a little skinny one, a little half inch one. This will work. Okay. Thank you. There it is. Oh, it also has hello. That's a cute one to do. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do hello. I think the, oh, yeah. Hello. Just saying hello. There we go. Mm. Hey, what do you guys have planned for the weekend? I am going to be scrapbooking with my friend. We actually here in Dallas, we have a hotel that's letting us uh, gather as scrapbookers. We have to wear our masks. But they ha they're giving us six foot tables, all separated. Um, so we have our social distancing, but we can get together and, and scrap together. So that's what I'm doing this weekend. What are you guys doing this weekend? Evelyn says, this card is really great. I'll try tomorrow another stamp set on another. Yes, yeah. Oh, the that's the one fun thing about cards. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, you can do any. It's like, you make this a Christmas card gift card. Yeah, so fun. Okay, great idea, Evelyn. Here we go. So a little hello. Okay. And now I just need my scissors to trim. I need my snips actually. All right. Um, the half inch is a little wide, I think. So we're going to trim it down some. Wow, I am really shaking. Okay. There we go. And... Of course, I have to make a flag tail. Oh, did I tell you in the Christmas catalog um, that's coming out June 4th, which anyone who's ordered from me, I sent you a catalog. If you don't have it by June, um, your Christmas catalog by August 4th, please give me a shout out and I will get you one. But um, I sent a whole bunch of them already and they should be arriving any week now. Um, I got mine. So be watching for your, your uh, holiday uh, catalog. All right, so now I've got my hello, and I'm going to stick that right there. Um, oh, you know, I should have... Well, okay, it, it's, it all works. Um, I do need to trim it down a little bit, though. It's kind of long. And I what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it up under the, the thread like that. How's that look? There we go. I want to see it up close. There we go. So all I did was just tuck it under the, the, the thread. Just... Just like that. Okay. Thank you all so much for watching me. Oh, Evelyn's having a barbecue with her new Dutch oven. Oh, that's so fun. Candle, you're painting your gate. Okay. Uh, Debbie, yes, you do. You have your workshop tomorrow. Yes, social distancing. Good luck on your workshop. I know those cards look so cute. Um, for those of you on my team, uh, you can look on our team page and see the cards that Debbie's making. She uploaded them yesterday. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Well, you all have a fun and safe weekend, and I will see you back here Monday morning for a Masculine Card Monday. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye-bye.